YouTubers, Fortucookie, 45LC coming to you from the hot lead zone and today's topic is about reloading for the Glock pistol. Now the Glock pistol is a very popular pistol, nothing else needs to be said about that. But the factories do not recommend using reloads for the Glock. Now reloaders do that of course for the obvious reasons, but fact of the matter is the Glock pistol has some unique considerations that are very important because safety will be compromised if they're not taken care of. You've heard of Glock pistols blowing up and you don't hear about a lot of other pistols blowing up but the Glock happens to have problems with that if, if the ammunition is not done properly. And certainly a whole volume could be written on reloading for the Glock pistol. But let's go into some of these factors. Now all the concerns for safe reloading revolve around the Glock barrel. Well what is it about the Glock barrel that makes this a critical concern that we don't have to worry about some of these things and reloading for other of our handguns. But the Glock is very important if we don't want our Glock to blow up. So here are the concerns. So let's first discuss the rifling that is in the Glock barrel and that is called polygonal rifling. It's different than the rifling that we see in most of our revolvers and other auto pistols in this country because most of our US guns use cut rifling. It's done by taking a barrel and pulling a button, a cutting button through that barrel with a with a twisting action so that you create the rifling. Now what rifling is, is any groove or shape in a gun barrel that imparts spin stabilization to a bullet. And that's what rifling is. Well here's the cut rifling. It has grooves and it has top parts that are called lens. The grooves are set in the lens stick out and some of the lens can be wider some of the grooves can be wider but the basic rifling is this and as the, uh, those grooves go through the barrel they twist either in a right hand twist or a left hand twist now polygonal rifling is nothing new it's been around since the early artillery pieces that use polygonal rifling and in fact, a lot of the German guns today have polygonal rifling. H and K's rifles and pistols have polygonal rifling. There are other manufacturers that use polygonal rifling. And certainly Glock purports to have polygonal rifling. What polygonal rifling is, is instead of having grooves cut into the, the barrel metal, creating grooves at lens that stick up, what you have is basically a polygon which means either a six-sided or an eight-sided flat and angled shape. So here is a six-sided polygon and in some like a in a 45 bigger bore you have an eight-sided polygon and what and what the polygon has is flat sides with little corners. And of course what they do is they'll round off the little corners of the polygon and what you'll have there is a little valley there. Call it a valley. Now you'll hear polygon rifling referred to often as rifling that has hills and valleys. But let's look at that because what you have are valleys, but there are no hills. What you have is a valley and a flat, a valley and a flat, going all the way around, valleys and flats. And with a true polygonal rifling, what that means is when you fire a bullet, you'll get the negative, which is a, a hill and a flat, 
a hill and a flat. So the rifling itself has no hills, but the bullets fired from a polygonal barrel will have hills but no valleys. So to show you what I mean is if you look at a bullet fired from a polygonal barrel, rifle barrel, you'll see flats. And you'll see hills between the flats. But you won't see any valleys. And in the rifling itself, you'll see valleys which make the hills on the bullet. And you'll see flats which make the flats on the, on the bullet. But you won't see any hills on the rifling that make valleys on the bullet. So you see, once again, there are no valleys here, only hills and flats. That's because the rifling only has valleys and flats. Valleys and flats on the rifling make hills and flats on the bullet. So where did this idea of hills and valleys come from? And where it comes from is if you look into a Glock polygonal rifle barrel, you will see a little mound and a little valley and a little mound and a little valley. That's where the hills and valleys come from. This happens to be right hand twist. If you look at it from the muzzle and maybe you can see it better. See the little mound there? It's all rounded off. See a little valley there? It's all rounded off. But we've already talked about the fact that polygonal rifling doesn't have hills and valleys. Polygonal rifling has flats and valleys. And a polygonal fired bullet can only have flats and hills. You won't get that with a Glock barrel. What you'll get is valleys and hills. And there'll be valleys and hills in a bullet too. So is this true polygonal rifling? Maybe the definition of polygonal rifling is rifling that could be hammer forged right into the barrel because that's how it's manufactured. You get a mandrel that has hills and valleys on it and then you heat the barrel and hammer that right against the mandrel and you actually save a step in the manufacturer because you don't have to forge your hammer forge your barrel and then do the cut rifling. You can hammer forge it and, and create the rifling as you're hammer forging it. So you can save a step in manufacturer, a little less expensive. And by doing that, you use a, a system that has rounded, rounded lands and grooves, which is what you have with his hills and valleys. So is this what polygonal rifling is today, which is an easier way to manufacture barrels with the rifling in place, having rounded and no corners, no sharp cut rifling, but all rounded, but it's really not truly polygonal rifling. Well, why is this important? It's because you're told that you cannot shoot lead bullets in this barrel because of the polygonal rifling. And the reason why is that the polygonal rifling causes more fouling and, and leading, which will raise pressures with lead bullets, causing the gun to blow up. Well, that's, that's really a problem, isn't it? The other thing you'll hear often said is that right there where the chamber and the, and the rifling come together, right there, there's a little step there. And that step is so-called abrupt or very sharp. And that causes a lot of fouling there. And the fouling and letting that will happen there on a polygonal barrel will increase pressure when it builds up. And again, the pressure goes up and the gun blows up. So don't use lead bullets. Don't use reloads in your Glock. Well, let's look at this. Here is an aftermarket barrel made by Wolf. And I left it unclean so you can see the cut rifling easier. Now just imagine, now this happens to be left hand twist, but just imagine if you took all those little sharp corners there on top of those lands and grooves and you just rounded them all off. If you did that, how would that be any different than what this little mound and valley, the little hills and valleys that it has? You have the hills and valleys 
here too, all rounded off just like this one. So what's the, what's the difference except that you have corners? And now look at this barrel. I didn't clean it. Look at the fouling in there. Look at the where, where the chamber and the rifling meet. How is that any different than, the, than where the rifling and, and the chamber meet here? This might even be worse. This looks like it's a little more gentle where the rifling begins. To me, this looks more abrupt. And if that's the case and you get fouling like you see there, why wouldn't pressures happen to be a problem here? And so they're telling you you can't shoot lead bullets and yet this is the reason why we buy this wolf barrels. Let us shoot reloads and let us shoot lead bullets. So is, is the warning against using lead and reloads in this polygon barrel because of the polygon barrel collecting more fouling or because of the abrupt shoulder there where the rifling and chamber meet is that does that have any sense to it because they both have the same problem in that regard if if nothing else this has more so because why wouldn't sharp edges collect more fouling why wouldn't that abrupt beginning of that of that cut rifling even be more of a problem for fouling so I submit to you that that is not a problem. The type of rifling has nothing to do with whether the cast bullets or reloads can be used because they're both usable. So the rifling is not the problem in spite of what you'll hear. So what is the problem? So it's all in the chamber. The reason why Glocks have a problem with overpressure is notice that the case head is more unsupported on the Glock barrel than in the aftermarket barrel. You see that they've cut away a lot more of the metal here on this feed ramp. Not only that, but the feed ramp goes up the side of the chamber and it doesn't do that at anywhere near as much on the aftermarket barrel. This is called fully supported. This is called minimally supported case. I'll give you an idea what that means is you take a loaded round and pop it in there. That metal that's cut away there loses support of the case there, which causes a weak spot that could blow out when, when this is ignited. Also, I'll give you an idea is you take that case in there and you wiggle it. Listen to this. Can you hear that? Now I go up and down. Can you hear that? There's play. Up and down play. Sideways play. The chamber is oversized on a Glock barrel. Take the aftermarket barrel and you try to see if there's any play in there and yes there is a little bit because you have to have a little bit but there's nowhere to play as in the after as in the Glock barrel so you couple the larger chamber with the unsupported feed ramp and what you get is a vulnerability of the Glock barrel to overpressure. But you get improved reliability because it, everything just drops right in. So reliability is featured but pressure safety is what we're giving up. Now this is not a problem as m anywhere near as much for factory loads so the warning against using reloads and lead bullets makes sense. And why would that be? So all the things that reloaders do that can accidentally cause higher pressure such as 
bullets that are too hard, bullets that are too big, bullets that are seated too deeply, or bullets that aren't crimped properly and are driven deeper into the case on functioning, or the use of fast burning high pressure powders, especially with powders like tight group or tight wad, accidentally overcharging or double charging, accidentally putting in magnum primers, accidentally using cases that are, that are already too weak, been reloaded too many times, or using cases that have been fired in Glocks before so that there's already a weak spot and that weak spot lines up again with the weak spot. That's why factory loads use brand new brass and gives you a little bit more safety in Glocks. But we don't have any of those safety margins with our reloads in Glocks. So, the reason why Glocks blow up is for all those reasons. Any overpressure in a Glock, you put this into a Glock chamber and that case has to has to blow out to fill the, 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 the oversized chamber in the first place and if there's any weak spot on an unsupported part of the case you'll get the case blowing out in that spot the gases go all over inside the the pistol destroys the inside of the pistol blows out the magazine and destroys the trigger all of those bad things happen that you see on on glocks that happen they're called kaboom events we don't want any kaboom events the factory doesn't want them either, that's why I tell you no reloads and no lead bullets because lead bullets are usually reloads. So that's the reason why they tell you not to use lead bullets in a Glock and not to use reloads in a Glock. But can we reload Glocks well? And yes, extra safety in a fully supported chamber, in a standard chamber with cut rifling aftermarket barrels completely safe to shoot with lead bullets and completely safe to shoot with uh, extra safety margins for use of fast burning powders even though it's not probably a good idea it's probably best to use a medium burning powder in these uh, Glock pistols anyway but that's why reloaders like to use aftermarket barrels in Glocks and besides the chamber is properly dimensioned so we don't overstrain our brass we don't get a weak spot because of the unsupported case unsupported chamber and we can use our brass over again with complete confidence brass shot and glock barrels are questionable can can be used with safety with uh, extra care but if we're not careful we're asking for trouble with a glock pistol with reloads and cast bullets so that's the reason not the polygonal rifling, but because of the, of the characteristics of the Glock chamber. YouTubers out there, take care. Safe reloading to you. You can reload Glocks, just got to be more careful with everything. No fast burning powders. And uh, also another thing we didn't mention is heavy bullets. You use heavier bullets, tend to get higher pressures. So we can use heavier bullets, but have to watch out for the powder charge in that case. Bye for now.